history is richly woven with threads of faith, conquest and ambition. Few stories capture this complexity like the intertwined narratives of the Christian Crusaders, the Knights Templar and the Zionist movement. Across centuries, these groups have been bound by a common fascination with the Holy Land, a geographical region of immense religious and strategic significance. The very mention of their names evokes images of knights, battles and ancient secrets. This video delves into the intricate relationships between these groups, exploring their shared motivations, divergent paths and the enduring legacy they have left on our world. The Crusaders, driven by religious zeal, embarked on a series of military campaigns to reclaim Jerusalem from Muslim rule. The Knights Templar, a monastic military order, emerged from the Crusades, amassing wealth and power. Centuries later, Zionism arose, fueled by the desire to establish a Jewish homeland in the ancient land of Palestine. While separated by time, these movements are linked by powerful threads. Exploring these connections offers a fascinating glimpse into the enduring power of faith, the allure of the past, and the enduring resonance of the Holy Land in shaping human history. Their stories are shrouded in intrigue and controversy. Were the Templars guardians of sacred relics? Did their wealth secretly fund later movements? By examining these questions and unraveling the threads that connect these groups, we gain a deeper understanding of the forces that have shaped our world, from the medieval era to the present day. The Crusades, a series of religious wars launched by Catholic Europe, stand as a stark example of faith's power to mobilize and divide. These wars, spanning over two centuries, were marked by fervent religious devotion and intense conflict. Motivated by a potent blend of religious fervor and political ambition, European Christians embarked on a quest to wrest control of the Holy Land from Muslim rule. This mission was seen as both a divine mandate and a strategic opportunity. In 1095, Pope Urban II issued a call to arms, urging Christendom to liberate Jerusalem and the Holy Sepulchre, the site of Jesus Christ's burial and resurrection. His impassioned plea resonated deeply across Europe. His words ignited a firestorm of religious zeal, inspiring thousands to take up the cross and journey eastward. The call to crusade was not just a call to arms, but a call to faith and sacrifice. These crusaders, hailing from all levels of society, were driven by a potent mix of motivations. From kings and nobles to peasants and serfs, the call to crusade transcended social boundaries. Religious piety undoubtedly played a central role. Many believed that fighting for the liberation of Jerusalem was a sacred duty, a means of atoning for sins and securing their place in heaven. The promise of spiritual reward was a powerful motivator. Yet, the Crusades were far from purely religious endeavors. They were complex campaigns influenced by a myriad of factors. Political and economic factors also fueled the flames of war. The allure of wealth, land and power was ever present. European rulers saw an opportunity to expand their territories and influence in the wealthy East. The Crusades offered a chance to gain prestige and resources. Younger sons seeking land and glory found in the Crusades a path to carve out their own destinies. For many, it was a chance to escape the confines of their birthright and seek fortune. The First Crusade, launched in 1099, achieved a stunning victory with the capture of Jerusalem. This triumph was celebrated as a divine endorsement of their cause. However, this initial triumph proved short-lived. The challenges of maintaining control over distant lands soon became apparent. Subsequent Crusades met with mixed success often devolving into brutal conflicts marked by bloodshed and religious intolerance. The idealism of the early Crusades gave way to the harsh realities of war. The Fourth Crusade, intended to target Egypt, instead saw Christian forces sacking Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire, in 1204. This unexpected turn of events shocked the Christian world. This act of betrayal sowed deep divisions within Christendom, highlighting the complex interplay of faith, power and greed that fueled the Crusades. The unity of purpose that had initially driven the Crusaders began to fracture. The Crusades ultimately failed to achieve their primary objective of maintaining long-term Christian control over the Holy Land. Despite numerous campaigns, the Holy Land remained contested. However, their impact on European history and the relationship between the East and West was profound. The Crusades reshaped the medieval world in ways that are still felt today. 
the Crusades opened up new trade routes, exposing Europe to Eastern goods, ideas and cultures. This exchange of knowledge and commerce had lasting effects on European society. They also left a legacy of religious animosity and mistrust, the echoes of which still resonate today. The wounds inflicted by these conflicts have been slow to heal. The Crusaders, driven by their faith and ambitions, left an indelible mark on history, their story a cautionary tale of the intoxicating and often destructive power of religious zeal intertwined with worldly desires. Their legacy is a complex one, filled with both heroism and tragedy. From the crucible of the Crusades emerged one of history's most enduring enigmas, the Knights Templar. These warrior monks have fascinated historians and enthusiasts alike for centuries. Founded in 1119, the Templars were a monastic military order tasked with protecting Christian pilgrims journeying to the Holy Land. Their mission was both spiritual and martial, blending the sacred with the sword. Clad in distinctive white mantles adorned with a red cross, these warrior monks embodied the fusion of faith and martial prowess that characterized the Crusades. Their attire was not just symbolic, but also a mark of their commitment and identity. Initially a small group sworn to poverty and obedience, the Templars rose to prominence, evolving into a powerful and wealthy organization that exerted considerable influence throughout Europe and the Middle East. Their rapid rise was nothing short of extraordinary. The Templars' military prowess on the battlefield earned them respect and renown. Their strategic acumen and bravery were legendary, making them a formidable force in the Crusades. They fought with unwavering courage and discipline, becoming a formidable force against Muslim armies. Their reputation as fierce warriors spread far and wide, instilling both fear and admiration. Yet it was their innovative approach to finance that truly set them apart. Beyond their martial exploits, the Templars were pioneers in the world of medieval banking. The Templars pioneered early banking practices, establishing a sophisticated system of financial instruments that allowed pilgrims to travel safely without carrying large sums of money. This system was revolutionary for its time. They amassed considerable wealth through donations, strategic investments, and the acquisition of land holdings. Their financial acumen was as sharp as their swords. This accumulation of power, however, proved to be a double-edged sword. Their vast resources and influence made them both powerful allies and dangerous enemies. As the Templars' wealth and influence grew, so too did suspicions and resentment. Their success bred envy and fear among the powerful. King Philip IV of France, heavily indebted to the Templars, saw an opportunity to eliminate his debts and seize their riches. His motives were as much about power as they were about wealth. In 1307, he orchestrated a brutal crackdown arresting Templar knights across France on trumped-up charges of heresy, blasphemy, and immorality. The charges were a thinly-veiled pretext for his greed. Subjected to torture and coerced confessions, many Templars were burned at the stake, including their last grandmaster, Jacques de Molay. Their tragic end was marked by fire and blood. The order was formally dissolved by Pope Clement V in 1312. The dissolution marked the end of an era, but not the end of their legend. The swift and brutal demise of the Knights Templar, shrouded in accusations and intrigue, has fueled centuries of speculation. Their fall was as dramatic as their rise. Were they victims of a power-hungry monarch or guardians of forbidden secrets? The truth remains elusive, adding to their mystique. The mystery of the Knights Templar continues to captivate. Their story a reminder of the fleeting nature of power and the enduring allure of the unknown. Their legacy lives on, a testament to their enduring impact on history. Centuries after the Crusades and the fall of the Knights Templar, a new movement with its sights set on the Holy Land emerged, Zionism. This movement was not driven by the same religious fervor that characterized the Crusades, but by a different kind of passion and urgency. Born in the late 19th century amidst a backdrop of rising anti-Semitism in Europe, Zionism represented a yearning for a Jewish homeland, a safe haven from persecution, and a place to revive Jewish culture and identity. It was a response to centuries of marginalization and violence, a beacon of hope for a scattered and oppressed people. Unlike the Crusaders, driven by religious conquest or the Templars, sworn to protect Christian pilgrims, Zionists were motivated by a potent blend of nationalism, secularism, and a desire for self-determination. They sought not just a physical territory, 
but a place where Jewish life could flourish in all its dimensions. Theodor Herzl, an Austro-Hungarian journalist, is widely regarded as the father of modern Zionism. His vision was both radical and pragmatic, aiming to address the immediate dangers facing Jews while also laying the groundwork for a sustainable future. In his influential 1896 pamphlet, Der Judenstaat, The Jewish State, Herzl argued that the only solution to the Jewish question was the creation of a Jewish state. He believed that Jews could only achieve true safety and equality in a nation of their own. He envisioned a modern, thriving nation where Jews could live free from discrimination and persecution. Herzl's dream was not just about survival, but about creating a vibrant, dynamic society that could stand as a testament to Jewish resilience and creativity. Herzl's ideas resonated deeply with Jews facing increasing anti-Semitism and pogroms in Eastern Europe. These violent outbreaks underscored the precariousness of Jewish life in the diaspora and fueled the urgency of the Zionist cause. The Dreyfus Affair in France, in which a Jewish army officer was falsely accused of treason, further highlighted the pervasive nature of anti-Semitism and the urgent need for a Jewish homeland. This scandal shocked the world and galvanized support for Zionism among Jews and non-Jews alike. Zionist organizations sprung up across Europe and the United States, promoting Jewish immigration to Palestine, then under Ottoman rule. These groups worked tirelessly to raise funds, organize logistics, and build the infrastructure needed for a new society. These early pioneers faced immense challenges, from harsh living conditions and limited resources to resistance from the local Arab population. Despite these difficulties, they persevered, driven by a profound sense of purpose and destiny. Despite these obstacles, the Zionist movement gained momentum, fueled by a combination of idealism, pragmatism, and a deep-seated belief in the right to a Jewish homeland in their ancestral land. This blend of visionary thinking and practical action was key to the movement's success. The Zionist dream, born from a yearning for security and self-determination, not accounting for the cost of Palestinian lives at stake, both Christian and Muslim, would ultimately lead to the establishment of the State of Israel, occupied Palestine, in 1948, forever altering the political landscape of the Middle East and paving the way for decades of brutality and conflict. The creation of the State of Israel was primarily successful by way of war and persecution of Palestinians, known as the Nakba, the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians through violent displacement and dispossession of land, property and belongings, destruction of society and suppression of culture, including their identity, political rights and national aspirations. These bitter realities of faith, some would say brutalities of faith, have shaped and cultured the history of the Holy Land and consequently the harsh and tumultuous world we live in today. 